Howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Time for part Dewey in our server redo video series. So this one will be covering the uh, migration of the domain controller over to the uh, 2016 server and then the demotion of the old domain controller and show you the steps involved in that. So I'm not going to sit here and talk too long. Let's get right to the video. All right, so here we are, day number two. This is going to be a long, drawn-out process. Fortunately for y'all, you don't have to. You'll get to see the edited version. Um, again, let's cover what I'm doing today. Uh, by the way, I got all the data transferred from uh, MCS-SAN1. All the data that's on there, my videos, my my audio, my uh, pictures, my the stuff I use to run my business all on that server has now been moved to that drive pool that I created on MCS HV1, which is my first Dell uh, server that I got. My second Dell server, as you know, is running Windows Server 2016, and I had an epiphany. Uh, what I was going to do is create the domain from scratch, and I've decided to scratch that idea. What I want to do is migrate my Windows Server 2012 domain over to the Windows Server 2016 that is already up and running on that Dell. No need to reinvent the wheel, huh? That saves me from a couple of things. One is having to rejoin all my computers to the network, having to do, uh, having to transfer uh, desktop profiles and that kind of thing. It's just an easier way to do it, and I need to know how to do uh, a domain transfer from 2012 to 2016. So that's what I'm going to do next. Is I'm going to go out there and I'm going to uh, prepare my Windows Server 2012 for domain transfer, and then I'm going to transfer that domain over to 2016 server, make that my primary domain controller, and then uh, 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 take the 2012 server out of the mix and just make it a member server. So I found some guidance online, and I'm going to be following this guy's uh, tutorial and uh, letting you see how I do it uh, while we do it in the, in the raw, so they say. And then what will come after that is I will need to then remove the drives from uh, uh, my MCS SAN 1, those four two terabyte drives, and I will need to then move them into the uh, Dell server. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, Joe, why didn't you copy all the data? Why didn't you just move the drive vendor drive pool over to the new server, install drive pool, and bing, bang, boom, re-import the drives? Well, that's my plan, but I always want a backup in place. So this is an this is an additional backup I've put in place. This is why I always keep two sets of drives around, just so I have enough room to back everything up. Because I don't know that that's going to work. I'm coming off of a standard serial ATA controller off of a uh, off of a uh, a regular a motherboard, consumer grade motherboard, and I'm going onto that Dell Perk controller. So uh, when I move those drives into that Dell machine, I'm going to have to reinitialize them and create a volume on them, and that's going to wipe the contents on the drive. Now, I may get lucky, and I may be able to import those as foreign disks, and then I may be able to go into Server 2016 and just uh, reload Drive Bender and tell it all is well, uh, but we'll see. But worst case scenario, I'll have to transfer that all that data back to those drives, uh, but that's, that's okay. That's how we learn. And I'm going to apologize for the lighting today. You're going to see the camera, see it adjusting. It's because it's cloudy outside today. It's not a bright, sunshiny day. And I depend on our good friend, Mr. Sun, to provide me with my studio lighting. I have, however, put on a new clean shirt for you guys. And I even shaved. Because my whiskers are going into my mouth. And I hate that when that happens. All right, so I'm on uh, Domain Controller 1. MCSDC 1, as you can see up here. Now, the first thing I need to do in order to migrate this domain controller to 2016 is I need to mount the uh, Windows Server 2016 DVD in the drive uh, on the uh, domain controller on the 2012 because I'm going to need to access some files on that, uh, on that DVD when I go to do the uh, domain changeover. So I've mounted that drive. We'll give it a minute here to uh, refresh and update uh, it's a it's a four terabyte file so it's it's rather large so these are the uh, files and folders I'm gonna need in order to make this happen now the first thing I'm gonna do is go out and make sure that I am a, uh, a member of the correct group so I'm gonna go out to a command prompt here um, 
oh here we go CMD if you just type start typing it in and I'm going to uh, I'm going to run this as an administrator and then I need to type in net user Adama to see what my permissions are and these are the big ones I want to make sure I'm a member of the domain administrators enterprise schema admins uh, it's etc and group policy creator so what I need to do the reason I did this was to make sure that I have full domain uh, permissions in order to change all this normally use the account called administrator but I disable that when I create my uh, my uh, domain controller and I create my own account which is Adama next thing I want to do is uh, make sure that uh, this uh, machine holds the FSMO roles and uh, I typed that, oh, net dom, sorry. Net dom. Query, FSMO. And uh, good. So the schema master, domain naming master, PDC, rid pool, infrastructure, yada, yada, are all held by this machine good that means I'm on the right machine because I have to make changes to this active directory schema on this machine before proceeding the next thing I want to do is verify that the um, what schema this is running so I have to go out to uh, to regedit and run it And then we're going to go to H key local machine. Uh, I think it's software. No, system. Current control set. Services. Then we're looking for NTDS. There it is. And then parameters. All right. And here's what we're looking for right here: the schema version. Um, I'm on currently. I'm on schema version 69. I need to be on 87 I believe for Windows Server 2016 so the first thing we're going to need to do is get that version to change uh, and be the correct version and so we'll do those steps next all right so let's uh, get rid of that let's leave our command prompt open our uh, our DVD is mounted as drive E we need to remember that for future reference now the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, just verify some issues so I'm going to type in domain.msc and launch a program so if I right click here and change it to raise forest functional level I can see here that my forest functional level is at 2012 R2 if I come down here and tries try to raise the domain functional level you can see it's already at server 2012 R2 but I need to raise these to 2016 so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my E drive I'm gonna go to the um, support AD prep directory I think it is yeah and there it is so now the, the next thing I want to do the first thing I want to do is what I run and run adprep.exe forward slash forest prep. All right, and that's going to warn me, uh, make sure all, all my Active Directory domain controllers are at least server 20, uh, 2003 or later, yada yada. It's going to upgrade the Active Directory domain controller schema master. If I want to continue, press C. Uh, I'm going to enter C and enter and I'm going to let this run and hopefully this will not bomb on me. Good, so the command uh, completed successfully, AD prep successfully updated the forest wide information. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run that same command so I'm just going to press F3 but this, say, this time I'm going to run domain prep and it's done. Let's open up uh, RegEdit. Let's go back, and now that should be at the schema version should be at 87. All right. So 
now we're ready now the next thing we need to do is connect up to our 2016 server and we need to uh, make that a domain controller on this domain which we will be able to do now that we've uh, extended the schema on this uh, to support 2016 all right so this is uh, my 2016 server it's running on that new Dell y'all so graciously donated to me I have since renamed it we had initially named that MCS dash uh, HV2 I have since renamed it to 2016 dash DC 01 this is going to be my big kahuna server uh, and now what I need to do is go out to uh, server manager and we need to uh, start adding the Active Directory components uh, to this server. I don't have any virtual machines running on here right now, uh, so no big deal. Now, Microsoft best practices tell you not to run Hyper-V on a domain controller in a production environment. I have a very small network. Um, trust me, this server is more than powerful enough to handle this. So uh, we're not going to be concerned with that. But your best practices would be to set up a standalone domain controller uh, on a non-virtualized box. It's one thing I want to make sure of is it's very important when you go to promote any machine to a domain controller or do anything domain related on your network is that your time is synced properly. So you, you want to make sure, one, that your, your time zone is correct and two, that your time down here in the lower right hand corner is correct as well. You can't see it, but it is correct. And you can see that my product is indeed activated. Now, I'm gonna be uh, doing this on a machine that is running a trial version of Windows Server 2012. Um, so I'm hoping this will work. Uh, they tell me it has to be an actual retail version, but um, I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, we're going to see if this works. So the first thing I want to do is come up here to manage and we're going to add roles and features. A little wizard pops up. We'll follow along. We're going to do a role based or feature based installation. We're going to do it on this machine, uh, the 2016-DC01. And all we're going to do is we're going to select Active Directory Domain Services and have it include the management tools. I'm going to go ahead and add that feature. Click on next, 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 and install. Now let me just, while it's while this is running, let me just talk about something. What I'm doing is not for the faint of heart. Um, you're basically going to be transferring all of your domain uh, controller roles over to this server from the server 2012. Now, my network is not very complicated. I have three or four PCs on my network here at my home office. So if I if I mess something up, it's not really a big deal. It is a big deal, but it isn't. But if you do this in a corporate environment and you screw something up, uh, you're going to be, uh, man, uh, all I can tell you is make sure you got good backups of everything before you start this. Now, so now the task is completed, as you can see here. So now what I want to do is I want to promote this server to a domain controller. So I'm going to click on here. And what I'm going to do is check add a domain controller to an existing domain. Uh, it, it's uh, You notice it's updating up here. It's a little status bar going by. And we're going to join this. Uh, we're going to make this a domain controller for mcs.local. We are going to make sure that we uh, we use DNS and set up DNS and the global catalog on here as well. Make sure that you, on the site name, you have your default first site name, and then uh, you're going to need to enter a, uh, a directory services restore mode password. Enter something in there that uh, you will not forget. Click on next. Okay, we're not going to worry about the DNS delegation. We'll deal with DNS later. Uh, now, keep in mind, though, DNS is very, very important to Active Directory. But I'll show you a little trick that I, I uh, learned. Now, I'm not going to choose replicate from any domain controller. I want it to make sure that we get uh, replicate the information from a DC1 that is there. So now we'll click on next. We're going to keep our folders just as they are. Um, one nice thing about uh, server 2012 and server 2016, if you're a... Uh, if you're a command line guy, uh, you can once it's done this, you can go out and you can actually view the script, the PowerShell script. It'll create it. You can save this 
anywhere you want to so if you ever needed to run this again you would not need to use the the wizard you could just come out here and, and edit your file and then run it i'm not a big powershell user so uh, i'm not going to use this but you do have that option i'm going to click on uh, next and then wait for it to update and you notice all prerequisites checked uh, have passed successfully uh, and it's just warning me about some uh, cryptographic services and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and click on install. And uh, we will let this run and we'll see how it uh, comes out. It's, uh, it's running through and it's now warning me I'm about to be signed out uh, because it has done what it needs to do. So we'll come back when the server comes back up. All right, so uh, 2016 DC1 is now back up and running and you can see it has added the... Active Directory, Directory Services, DNS, File and Storage Services were already there. Uh, let's come up to uh, Tools and let's go into Active Directory Users and Computers and we'll just verify that uh, we are now a domain controller and we are. There are two domain controllers in here. There is the 2012 domain controller and the 2016. You'll also see that it is a global catalog server and it is in the default first site, first name. I can drag that over so they're both global catalog servers now let's go over to DNS and let's open that up and take a look at that so there's our DNS entry for our domain and then here is all of our DNS settings you notice it did that automatically it repli replicated the DNS that we already had on there and we also have a reverse uh, PTR zone so if we drill down into this, go to default, first site, first name, and we'll see that both of those are now under there as domain controllers. If we click on this one here and come down to NTDS settings and to automatically generate it, I want to right click and I want to choose replicate now. And what I'm doing is making sure that the Active Directory domain service on 2016 DC1 and 2012 between the 2012 and 2016 server are replicated and up to date. So I've switched back over to uh, <clears throat> to 2016 DC1 and you can see on, I'm under Active Directory Sites and Services <clears throat> excuse me and you can see that uh, Domain Controller 01 2016 has automatically generated and replicated with uh, DC1 and the same way on DC1, it's replicated to me. And then if I open my uh, DC1, uh, and I come over here and do a refresh, you'll see it's replicated from DC1, and DC1 has replicated to DC1 uh, on the 2016 server. So our replication should be good to go. Now is where it gets a little hairy. So the first thing I want to do is open a command prompt. So just type in command. I'm going to right click on that and make sure I run that as an administrator. Now the first thing I want to do is do a query on my uh, FSMO roles. And you can see they're still over there the schema master, domain naming master, PDC, all that is still on uh, DC1 and we need to transfer those over to this new server. So we're going to use that with a we're going to do that with a utility called NTDS utility. NTD S U T I L. And then once we get there, we want to go into roles. And we, once we get there, we want to go to connections. And then we're going to go, we're going to type in connect to server 2016-dc01.mcs.local uh, uh, to connect. And it did so. It connected to the DC1 2016 using credentials of locally logged on user, which is Adama. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit on this one and go back to FSMO uh, role uh, maintenance. If I type a question mark there, 
uh, it'll tell me what all I can do here. What I'm concerned about are these here. So, so I'm going to type in transfer infrastructure. Ah, structure. Man, my typing skills. I'm trying to move my right arm around the, the microphone stand uh, master. So we want to, first thing we want to do is transfer the infrastructure master role. We hit enter. It's going to ask us, are you sure you want to transfer that? And I'm going to tell it yes. And we can see that it looks like it was successful. So now we're going to do the same thing with the rest of these roles in order. So I'm going to come here. Oops, sorry. Transfer naming master. Tell it yes. Now we're going to transfer the PDC role. Tell it yes. Get our question mark back again. We're going to now transfer the RID master. Yes. And now we're going to transfer the schema master. Yes. All right, so we're done with all this, so now we need to get out of it. So we're going to type quit and quit until we get out to a command prompt. Now let's do that net dom command. Uh, yeah, net dom query FSMO. And let's see who holds the roles now. And you can see now that the schema master, domain naming master, PDC, RID pool infrastructure all have been transferred over to this new server 2016 DC1. So for all intents and purposes now, this is the domain controller for my MCS.local domain. That role has been stripped away from uh, the 2012 server. Now another role that the 2012 server had was DHCP services. That has not been transferred. I'm going to have to manually transfer all that over. But the next thing we want to do now is we want to demote that 2012 server from being a domain controller um, and remove Active, Active Directory domain services off of there. So I'm going to switch over to that server now uh, and we will uh, get that process started. Now I'm going to leave the DHCP on here as a standalone server for now until I get around to uh, moving it and hopefully, fingers crossed, it will keep that uh, DHCP server role because if it's not authorized, it may uh, it may foobar it. Uh, so let's get uh, let's get around now to removing DC one this one MCS DC one from uh, the network. Now the first thing we want to do is come back to our old domain controller, run Active Directory sites and services, and come down here to the servers under MSC DC one. I'm sorry, right here under MCS-DC1, we want to right click on this and go to properties and we want to take off the global catalog server role from this server. So we're going to do that, click apply and OK. So you can see here we were successful now. DC1 2016 is a global catalog server and DC1 MCS is only a domain controller. So that's the first step in removing this uh, from the uh, from the system. So if I go into Active Directory Users and Computers and I come to the Domain Controllers, you'll see the reflection is taken here as well. DC1, MCS DC1 is now a domain controller only, not a global catalog server. So we've uh, verified that that setting is successful. All right, so now comes the uh, the tricky part. Well, it's not really tricky, it's kind of scary. Are you scared? I'm scared. Uh, we're going to close all these windows and we're going to go back here to server manager right here. And we're going to come up here and we're going to go to uh, remove roles and features. Uh, we're going to we're going to use the wizard on this. Make sure you're on the right server and I am. I'm on the old domain controller. I'm going to click next. Make sure I've selected the correct domain controller. Click on next and I'm going to remove Active Directory uh, domain services. 
and uh, the management tools as well. I'm going to go to remove features. Now, let this run. All right. So now it's warning me the validation results. It found a problem. I cannot remove these roles until I demote this domain controller. So I need to go ahead and click here to demote this domain controller. Now, it's asking me to supply the credentials to perform this operation. And I'm going to use MCS Adama. And it's warning me the server will be automatically restarted after the demotion. Role, uh, role removal needs to be performed after the restart. That's fine. We're going to click on next. And I'm going to, it also tells me that it hosts the DNS role. It's required by Active Directory. I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the removal and click on next. I'm going to enter a new password for the administrator so I can log back in. Uh, this will automatically reboot after it's done uh, demoting it. Uh, I'm going to click on next. Alrighty. And again, it's going to remove Active Directory domain services. Uh, and then when the process is complete, the server will be a member of the domain mcs.local. Uh, if I view the script, there's the script for PowerShell to do it free automatically. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on demote and we'll let this run. So uh, it is now a standalone server, but there's still some more stuff we need to do. Um, bear with me a moment. So now I've rebooted the machine and I've logged in as a local administrator, not as a domain administrator. And we're going to come back and we're going to complete uh, the, the role removal of the server to do the final demotion on it. And then we need to make some changes to DNS. So we're going to go up to manage, remove roles and features next. We're going to do it on this server. So we're going to remove Active Directory Domain Services and I have a one o'clock, there we go, and we're also going to remove DNS. Okay, click on Next, <clears throat> Next, and Remove, and we'll let this run. So our feature removal was successful. We'll go ahead and close. Now it wants us to reboot, but we need to do one more change. Uh, if we want this member server to be able to still see the network, we need to uh, change one of the network settings. So I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna right click down here on Open Network and Sharing Center. Go to Adapter Settings. Go to Properties. And what I want to do is enter the IP address of the 2016 server, which is, let me get that information here. I think it's six. Yes, it is. It's 5.6. So we'll come back here and we'll change this to a six it OK. And then now we need to uh, restart this machine. Now I'm going to leave this server running in part of the domain. While I get to DHCP, I'll move over to the new server. And while I test it uh, during the day today to make sure I haven't screwed the pooch on anything else. And then I'm going to reboot uh, that other domain controller, our new domain controller as well make sure it comes back up properly. This time when I log on, I'm going to log on to the domain. So we'll need to change that back to uh, other user. And we'll do Adama at mcs.local. Enter our password. And that is a good sign. That means our, our domain controller is up and running. Let's go to uh, let's go to 2016 here. Bear with me, and we'll run it on here. Uh, 
And good, you'll see that uh, the DC-01 2016 is now the only domain controller and it should have put uh, DC-01 or DC-1 right here as a standalone computer. And if I right click on that and go to properties, it'll tell me, it tells me it's a standalone workstation or server, uh, 2012 evaluation, yada, 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 yada. So it looks like we were successful. Now, one thing I want to check on here is I want to make sure that we have the correct DNS entry in here. We want it to point to itself for DNS now on the 2016 server. So there you go. That's the end of part two in this series of videos. I warned you it was going to be long and drawn out. I'm trying to keep the episodes, you know, 30, 40 minutes, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, I woke up. I just felt awful today. I don't know why. Uh, we had a little snafu on part one of the video. I posted it uh, earlier this morning, or actually I posted it last night before I went to bed, came in this morning and uh, put the video up, and uh, went out to test the video, and the damn thing kept coming up and saying the audio and the video was out of sync, and there was this problem and that problem, and then I got a couple of users that told me they were having trouble playing it. I tried modifying a couple of settings within... Uh, within uh, uh, Google uh, or within YouTube and I just could not get could not get that error message to go away I, I don't know what it was so I've deleted the video it had 85 views on it I'm so sorry I deleted it but I, I had no choice uh, I, because I couldn't fix it with with uh, YouTube had 85 views on it so if you guys want to go back and view that video again that'd be great <laughs> But uh, it is what it is. Anyway, I'm uploading that video now as we speak, and then this one will be coming up right behind it. So be on the lookout for uh, part three coming soon, uh, where we're going to cover uh, DHCP and actually getting those uh, drive pool those drives move over to the uh, new server as well, and letting you know how that came out. Again, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Our subscribers have jumped from 500 to 600 in a week. Uh, that's pretty good as far as I'm concerned. Thanks, guys. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, I guess we'll see you on the other side.